30 years, the General Wine Company, International Wine Shippers, has been sourcing brilliant wines and spirits from around the world and delivering them right to your door. Whether you are a wine lover, restaurant, hotel, or having a party or corporate event, the General Wine Company has the experience, highest levels of excellent customer service, and the range to offer you something special, whatever the budget or occasion. www.thegeneralwine.co.uk Good morning and welcome to Winescape TV. I am your host, Ditch Oatley, and uh, you'll notice I'm a little bit scruffy today. I'm wearing a jumper and I'm a little bit unshaven, but uh, opportunities like this don't come up very, very often. I'm sure the viewers, you will excuse us for this because we have with us here today uh, Jose Masso from Grupo Vinos del Pacifico in Chile. Um, he's only in the country for a short while, so when he came driving past, we dragged him into the studio here to have a few words uh, and obviously to interview him and uh, get a bit of insight into the Chilean wine industry as it is at the moment. Jose, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Hi. Great, thanks, thank you very much for indeed. inviting me. An absolute pleasure. Now, obviously you're here for a sort of relatively short period of time in the UK, um, but can you just tell us a little bit about the brands that you represent um, and how, sort of, uh, how it's working in the UK at the moment in the market? Well, um, as you said, uh, I am representing Grupo Vinos del Pacifico. That's a group of wineries, family-owned wineries, uh, where the biggest brand is, uh, that used to be a well-known brand in the UK, Undurraga. Hmm? Right it's here, the old Enduraga, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we do, as you can see, both sparkling and steel wines. Huh? And uh, I am here in the UK because uh, a few years ago we decided to change our strategy uh, in the market. And we uh, abandoned, or were abandoned, by the big five, as I call the supermarket, the multiple specialists. Yeah. And we tried to focus in uh, what uh, I call the fine wine distribution or the traditional distribution. So more Mainly of sort of independent companies. Independent companies, on trade, uh, wine clubs, wine, wine guilds, wine associations, all what you have here in the UK. And, uh, and uh, we are, and in order to do that, we started to also change the way we make our wines. Ah, okay. um, what we are doing nowadays is to go through different valleys in Chile, not only the Central Valley, mm -hmm. go to smaller ones with particularities. And uh, one trend that we're following is to go to cooler wine growing areas. What does it mean to go more into the co uh, towards the coast and towards the mountains to have uh, uh, to find small uh, uh, small places where we can have our vineyards with cooler climates. What does it mean that we can l leave the grapes longer hanging in the vineyards uh, until they really reach their optimum uh, ripeness without getting too too high in alcohol? Uh? Oh, okay. And this allow us to has to have much more fruit, much more elegance, higher level of acidity wines that. Um, I always say they are leaner, softer, more elegant. This means that uh, comparison to the big uh, uh, jammy wine, so you are not going to get tired after the second glass, maybe after the second bottle of wine. Uh, uh, following also a, a, a trend towards you know uh, leaner wines, uh, more fruit, less oak aging, and this is and this we decided to do it in order to offer something different for the independents. Uh, not mainstream, sure. not uh, nothing against mainstream, but to offer something different. We cannot, as Chile, we cannot offer the same wines on and on. We need to show something different. Absolutely. Now, it seems quite interesting you mentioned sort of uh, the leaner wines, less alcohol, because a recent study has shown that for people in, in the, U the US, uh, Germany, China, and the UK, people are looking for wines which don't have that high level of alcohol, something that's nearer 12% uh, 12 alcohol mm. or a little bit lower. Mm. So that's you know, an interesting development that you're, that you're saying there, um, that you're actually focusing on that. Yeah. Um, also quite interesting what you mentioned about the, the, the supermarkets is the fact that, uh, um, well, sort of, I guess sort of independents have, uh, have a more, more of a breadth and sort of an easier way of, of sort of hand-selling wine, so it's not for the mass market. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, a, again, a brilliant, brilliant uh, uh, sort of development. But uh, can you tell me a little bit about uh, um, how you see uh, the UK market as an export market of choice? Because certain studies have shown that uh, um, Chilean and Argentinian wineries are present for to choosing more profitable ones like the US, um, Germany, and other sort of uh, countries, uh, obviously Asia, of course, but other mm -hmm. countries in Europe. Um, because sort of the UK market is, uh, I say, a little bit less profitable. Um, the London International Wine Fair, um, which has, of course, just been, uh, there were only 14 Argentine wineries there. 
compared to the Pro Wine um, Festival in Dusseldorf, mm -hmm. there were 54 wineries. Mm -hmm. I mean, do you see the UK as, a, as a still a very important uh, market for export? Let's put it this way. Without the UK, China, Argentina could not be as successful as they are. Okay. Mm -hmm. Full stop. Uh, second, um, That's good to know. <laughs> <laughs> this, uh, this, uh, then uh, the, um, the UK market is one of the most receptive markets for different wines. Unfortunately, it's not the most profitable. Um, there, um, don't blame it. I'm, uh, not, let's not blame it, the consumers, the big supermarkets. It's the pound. Uh, mm. So and. I don't know if you, but I don't control the pound. Uh, no, otherwise, I wouldn't be not. here, uh, <laughs> or, or maybe I would be here, but more relaxed and not uh, and not uh, selling wines. So, um, uh, the the UK market has not lost appealing, has not lost attention, has not lost importance. But there are other markets that were smaller, not that uh, interesting for mm -hmm. us, that are gaining interest some of them, or a lot of them, following the UK uh, pattern. So okay. the influence of the UK market has not lost a single weight in the last uh, years. What has lost interest is the London Wine Trade Fair. Mm. This, is, this is sort of the, yeah. this is the feeling uh, in the industry that it's no longer seen as an important place to be. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very expensive to, to take stands mm. there, and especially if you're doing a, a country stand yeah. rather than just a winery stand. Yeah, it is. And especially for New World wines, the timing is bad because we have nothing new to show. At the mid-end of May, we are, the wines of the new vintage are not ready, and the wines of the old vintage are already well known. So at least for the new world, is a bad timing. For, for European wines on the other side, is a much better timing. So, right, okay. and, uh, and believe, believe me that uh, the margins in the wine industry are not big enough to go to more than one big trade show a year. Absolutely. And Provine is, or is today, the best trade show in the world because you have, it's business oriented. It's buyers meeting wineries. So uh, sad for the London Wine Trade Show, sad for London, sad for us because it's much more interesting to come to London mm. than to go to Dusseldorf, although it's not a bad uh, What's wrong place. with Dusseldorf? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but um, yeah, the London Wine Trade Show lost, uh, uh, lost uh, interest, but not the UK as a market. Okay. And uh, even and, and the UK as a, as a mind-building market, as a trendsetter, has not lost its, uh, its uh, interest. Chine China or Far East is following what is happening in, in the UK, is following what the UK writers are, are writing about the wines. So don't be too shy. It's not England, it's not the English consumers, it's just a pound that is, has made this market less interest for us. Say. But it is, it is like that. Yeah. Uh, uh, that's it. Yeah. That's very true. I say it's, it's, it's great you've heard that here first. Um, now, I've got sort of, as, on a more of a personal level, uh, Jose, if you were, say, stranded on a, a desert island, maybe you have someone with you, maybe not, but what would be the one wine that you would have on the desert island with you? Um, if it is uh, summertime, I would yeah, like the to. Sun's shining. <laughs> it's a desert island. Um, got, you know. uh, I would uh, take this one. Huh? <laughs> the Andaraga, there yeah, it is. Well, more than uh, it is Andaraga, my wine, but it's uh, uh, bubbles. I would take a sparkling wine. Um, nothing against steel wines, but uh, if you're alone in a desert island, bubbles make more, uh, make you happier perhaps than a steel wine. Okay, now then, if, if, it's, say, if you weren't on your own, who would you be having that with and why? Uh, and you're not allowed uh, to say your wife. Uh, well, that was the <laughs> official answer. If not, well, um, I would say that I would take, uh, uh, could be Kate Blanchett. It could be uh, Kate you Moss. Kate Mo you mentioned Kate Moss. Cena earlier. Miller. <laughs> could be Jennifer Connolly. Uh, I'm not that picky when it comes to uh, uh, to women and to uh, to beauty. So uh
that's brilliant. Well, as I say, this Andraga is, uh, is still as good as it always was, which is uh, what we'd like to hear, both the rosé and the brute. Um, but uh, I'm I know you've got, to obviously, a load of meetings this afternoon to get to, so, I, Jose, I'm going to thank you, but I have to also thank you for your, your insight into the mm -hmm. UK uh, market as an export zone, um, mm -hmm. because I think in, in the press, as I say, there's a little bit of negativity. Mm -hmm. So um, it's great that uh, Jose's been able to sort of clear a few points up for us. We are still OK in the UK market. We're still leading the world, so to speak, in the wine world. But from this part, it's business is live. We've got phones ringing, etc. But, uh, Jose, thank you very much for joining us. You're it's welcome. It's been an absolute pleasure thank to you. speak to you. Um, this has been Winescape TV, and no doubt so we'll be speaking, hopefully, with Jose at greater length next time he is in the UK. Uh, but he has got a dash off now, so we're going to sign off and say thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you very, very soon. Thanks very much.